this is a good one. Uh, what research would you like to uh, what research would you like to see done? What clinical questions do you wish you could answer better? This is a cool one. Um, I would love to see more research on like clinician bias and mm. patient interaction. Um, and uh, like, like essentially how, how uh, clinician bias affects patient uh, interaction and outcomes. I think there was a study not too long ago and JSPT looked at like known group validity with scapular dyskinesis and they had like an unblinded group of assessors and a blinded group of assessors. And there was a difference in what the unblinded assessor saw and diagnosed with uh, scapular dyskinesia. So essentially, like if you knew the patient was in pain, you were more likely to diagnose them with scapular dyskinesia as opposed to the blinded um, therapist. And I think like research like that is, I, I just think needed more. I think it highlights like the things that we talk about a lot, but mm -hmm. it's hard to kind of measure anecdotally in session to session. And if you're, you know, again, having those disagreements with other clinicians or you're trying to, you know, be less wrong, like, why not take it to that level and, like, have more of a scientific method of looking at this stuff? I know, I know it's out there. I'd just like to see, I mean, I'd like to see more of it. For sure. Steal Quinn's answer from the previous episode that we recorded with Steph Allen. Um, I'd like to see more research done on acute to chronic workload ratio, specifically for barbell sport athletes, because currently um, all the research has been done on field sport athletes. So... Uh, one of the questions that we tackled in Steph's episode was, you know, how do we how do we apply those concepts? And Quinn answered, well, that we, we can't really right now. We can kind of guess at certain things and apply, you know, concepts. But but to say that we're really applying acute to chronic workload ratio principles as they stand in the literature right now is a bit of a stretch. Um, so I, I'd love to see some of that because I think there's there's a big um, hunger for that. <laughs> You know, uh, I've seen a lot of, of posts on social media from people talking about that that sweet spot, that 0 0.8 to 1.3 um, ratio, but, but not necessarily in the context of field sport athletes. It's kind of been like, hey, this is a thing that we should look for for like everything. And we have to be like, well, like we, we can't say that right now because we just don't know that. Right. So I, I'd love to see some of that done. Me too. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Along the same lines, the just the the notion and the concept of, of of training load monitoring is where I'm I'm basing a lot of my practice on currently because I it it simplifies it distills things down for me as a clinician and also for the patient to just essentially work within your means and and progress gradually and we can you know we can but we can put a conceptual framework on that. However the right now where we're at is like we have this we have literature that's just giving us data and so like with acute to chronic workload ratios we've just got we're just collecting mountains of data that are that are spewing specific ratios and then we're finding that some subsets of athletes very you know specific sports specific times of the year specific levels are showing different risk, different uh, percentage of risks of injury based on what they're currently doing in training. It's like, that's great. That's a great place to start. It's the problem is it's, it's a hundred percent data and correlation driven. We don't know which way the arrow is going. And I'm probably saying this right now because I'm nipples deep in, the, in <laughs> causal inference. <laughs> and I'm really, I'm really geeking out on causal inference right now. And, and, that's something that I think we get all freaked out about. It's like, ah, causation, and we can't, you know, we can't prove anything causes anything or these types of things. And then we are like, just sit on our haunches and say, well, correlation, and we're cool with that. But again, it's like, why? So we look at AC ratios. Why is it 0.8 to 1.3? Or why does a spike of doubling your workload this week versus the last month increase your risk for injury? Why did Joe triple his work and not get hurt? But Johnny, you know, doubled his work and just got blown out of the water. So I know that um, that there's an editorial and I think, I don't know if it's, I don't know if Gabbett is the lead author, um, but it's essentially explaining moderate, or it's, it's 
throwing the notion out of moderators and mediators. A mediator being something that facilitates the risk. A moderator being something that buffers the risk. So maybe, what was the dude's first name who didn't get hurt and tripled his workload? Joe? I think Johnny was my second yeah, guy. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. So the first guy, well, okay, maybe. So let's look at all these factors because causal, causal inference would say you can't just look at the data. The data is stupid. The data doesn't, doesn't take into account all of the other factors in, that come into play. All it tells us is just spews out information. So maybe Joe is young, younger. Maybe he has a, a longer training age. Maybe he doesn't have a history of injury. And then other components, maybe his sleep is on point. Uh, maybe he has genetic predispositions for certain things where Johnny doesn't. Maybe Johnny has had prior injury. Maybe he uh, doesn't have as, as high of an aerobic base if we're talking about field sport athletes, which has been potentially shown to be a moderator. Um, just aerobic capacity in general can have a, maybe have a protective factor. So we've got to start looking at these fa other factors and then figuring out why some people respond favorably to certain programs or certain uh, progressions and others don't. Cause it's, I think it's real easy. Cause right now all we're at is like, don't spike their workload too fast and don't do too little. And honestly, that's where we're at because yeah. the, the specific ratio itself, you can really only extrapolate it to the subsets, the types of athletes that they were tested on. <clears throat> and even, even they're calling to the question, even the way that those ratios were uh, calculated. And we talked about this with Gabbett on the podcast that's going to be released soon with coupled versus uncoupled AC ratios and some statistical problems with coupled ratios. So uh -huh. and we went, went into detail with that. So we'll get into that. But um, I, th I think that's what we need. We need to figure out other factors. We need to, we need more prospective data on training load monitoring. That's what I really, really want to see. I, and I think that's the direction that, that it's headed. Quinn, your causal inference, is that from the, the book of why? Is that where you're in right now? That's currently what I'm, what I'm reading the book of why. Okay. The new cool. science of cause and effect. It looks like I have a pretty intense workbook with that. It's yeah. So the supplemental information, the supplemental because I'm listening to it on audiobook and then mm -hmm. I printed out the supplemental packet, which is just like the diagrams and the figures and okay. the things that are in the book. But it's eighty so it's eighty pages of that. And so as I'm listening to it, I'm like trying to there's for me still like physically writing, physically taking notes is how the best way for me to learn. It gives me that mental representation because I can put it into my own words, I can like draw my own little diagrams, these types of things, but so that's where I'm into right now. Yeah, you're just updating your top down model. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> there you go. And I, it's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's, it's nothing, it's nothing crazy new. It's just, it's just like, let's take us, let's take it a step further. Like we do, we do cause cause and effect all the time. Like we know that the rooster doesn't make the sun come up. Like we know the, the common sense tells us the direction of that arrow, but with more complicated scientific questions that we don't know which direction the arrow is pointing. And if mm -hmm. we can, if we can have a better idea of that, then we can, our interventions can matter more. I like that. For sure. We should probably bring this in, uh, cause Mike, it is late for you. Um, and we, we appreciate you sacrificing some, uh, uh, some video gaming time to, uh, chat with us nerds. 